Uh, this here is my favourite book. It's called Flatland by Edwin Abbott Abbott. And we'll just get this cleared up nice and early on. His middle name and surname were both Abbott. Um, this was written 100 years before I was born, uh, but I like it so much that we named our son after the author, actually. Uh, and it describes Flatland. Now, Flatland's an entirely two-dimensional universe. So if you can imagine a whole world that's like a giant sheet of paper, and the inhabitants of Flatland are two-dimensional creatures, and they go about their daily life in a world where there's length and breadth, but there's no height. There's alongside and in front of, but there's no above or over. Now, the maths in Flatland is fairly straightforward. It's the maths you remember from school, what we'd call 2D Euclidean geometry. Uh, but the pop music in Flatland is quite strange. Here's an example of uh, pop in Flatland. Like a road next to troubled water, I will bend around. Uh, but it goes, on, it goes on to describe line land. Now, line land is a whole universe, if you can imagine it, that's arranged along a straight line. And the inhabitants of line land are one-dimensional points and tiny line segments. And they move along this great line. And if two of them come head to head, they've got no way of changing order, because that would involve either going above or below, which we've ruled out, or going around the other one. There isn't even a concept of around in a one-dimensional universe. This means you spend your whole life just bumping into the same two people. <laughs> now, I live in the country, so I know sort of what that's like, but for, <laughs> for, um, for most of you, that would probably feel quite strange, I expect. And uh, again, it does quite strange things to pop music. I feel it in my vertex. I feel it in my node. Your love is in front of me, nowhere else I can go. But uh, the point of this, uh, the point of the book is that just as the Linelander could never understand Flatland, and a Flatlander just couldn't comprehend our three-dimensional universe, so we humans struggle with the fourth dimension, don't we? What is the fourth dimension? What does it look like? And this is when it's great to be a mathematician, because mathematicians don't really care what the fourth dimension looks like. Just as long as the maths works and the numbers hold, we say, yeah, fourth dimension exists. Um, and the same goes for the fifth, sixth, eighth, tenth, a hundredth dimension. Just as long uh, as the maths works and the numbers hold, it's useful to us. And indeed, working in more dimensions than we could ever see has led to some of the great proofs of recent, uh, recent years, like Fermat's last theorem and the Riemann hypothesis. So when Edwin Evans Evans turns to me one day, he says, Daddy, is the fourth dimension real? I'll plant upon his head a kiss and say, Son, just like a million pounds, are oh, that old Father Christmas. Just because you've never seen it doesn't mean it don't exist. 